Welcome. My name is Erin Avram. I'm an assistant college lecturer in the Department of Chemistry at Cleveland State University. Today we're going to dive into how to design your own digital escape room. These are fun and interactive activities that challenge students to look for clues and analyze ciphers based on course content in order to escape a digital room. One of the ways that I have used escape rooms was for students to review content before an exam. These can also be used to introduce new concepts, to challenge students to engage with more challenging learning objectives in a group, or as a review at the end. Now, there are several steps to doing this. The first is to identify the purpose of this activity. What do you want the students to get out of this? The next would be to write your prompt or kind of think of a theme that you want to go with. The example I'm going to be using today is based on an African Serengeti, and I'm also using first grade learning objective, which is adding to 10. Next, you want to create your activities, so what types of things are you going to have your students do? And then you're going to design your entire room and design the theme. And then building in a Google form for students to submit their answers, and then finally, finally publishing your website. So we're going to go ahead and flip. I'm going to show you an example of one. So on the screen right now is an example escape room that I developed. So again, this is a first grade standard identifying the missing addend to 10. So at the top, we have a nice border, a header at the top. Here's the prompt. My husband is really great at puns. You can make this as silly or as serious as you would like. If I was teaching like a nuclear chemistry unit, I might have something with Chernobyl and having the students trying to escape during the Chernobyl accident. In this particular case, we're just having fun in the African Serengeti. So the goal here is to try and match the adults with the babies. And there are links embedded in this image. So this is an image that I put together. I found different images online and combined them and then added in links for each of our activities. So if we go through, you can actually see that my pointer changes from just the arrow to the hand. And the pointer hand indicates that there's an activity linked here. So some of the links and activities that I designed, this first one is a matching game. This particular website is called EduCandy, and they have a lot of different activities the students can do. You, you create a certain set of, of matching, so maybe terms and definitions or whatever you might want, and then the students can choose how they interact. So they can choose multiple choice, or they can do X's and O's, or a crossword puzzle, a memory game. My personal preference is for the matchup. So they'll, cl they'll click the particular activity they're interested in, and it's going to generate the game for them. We're going to click play. Again, all of these activities are super easy for the students. They're just a one click and go. Now here I actually incorporated the escape room clue which should be pretty pretty obvious here. Everything else is adding to 10. This one obviously is not. And you just drag and drop to each one of the answers. If the students get it wrong, they get immediate feedback, which is really nice for them to, to be able to gauge how they're doing with the content. At the very end, they get this, this excited music and a you win. I've also used these matching games. So they can click, you'll create, this is really nice to incorporate images. So if I was doing chemical reactions or something where, where an image would be helpful, in this particular case, they can just kind of click around. And once they find something that matches, in this case, we're adding to 10. So we're going to be matching a picture with the number. And then they'll get instant feedback there. The Google Slides gives you a lot of freedom in designing an activity. So in this particular case, the problems are along the right-hand side, and then based on their answers, they're going to get a particular clue. So in this case, we can see that two plus eight equals 10. So our first letter is going to be I. Two is for I, so our first clue is gonna be something that starts with I. In this case, the answer is gonna be Impala. I also like to incorporate cahoots. So cahoots are a nice way to have the students, it's kind of a competitive, interactive activity for them. These are multiple choice questions and gives them instant feedback on whether they're correct or not. So these are just going to pop up a bunch of questions, they'll select the correct answer. So in this kind of an activity, they'll also get feedback if they get it incorrect. So if we select the wrong answer, it's going to tell them immediately. I always incorporate the clues right at the end, so it'll just be a question that says, your Kahoot clue is, 
and then it'll be really obvious for the students to do that. There are also some, some websites where you can create your own cell phone, text string, a Facebook post, newspaper articles, and the possibilities here are going to be endless to, to give the students uh, all sorts of different types of problems and things to solve. This particular case there, this was for a pharmacology class that I designed, and the students had to figure out what the clearance was for this particular patient so they had enough clues that they'd be able to figure that out. And this is designed after a, a, a cell phone text stream. So I use Google Drawing to put together the image with all of the pictures layered on top. Now Google Image Search is definitely an amazing tool. So here I'm looking for lions. Now we do want to make sure that we're using Creative Commons licensing. So if you're doing a Google search, you want to go to Settings and then click down to Advanced Search. In here down at the bottom, there is the Usage Rights and you want to click Creative Commons Licenses. This is going to give you only images that you can use. You also want to make sure that you're double checking the usage rights for these, but this is a great place to start for your images. I find that cartoons are usually a better place because they're going to be more likely to have a nice clear background. Now, if there are backgrounds there, the website remove.bg, it will remove your background so that you can layer your images on really easily. So I'm going to drag and drop uh, an image here so we can kind of see what this is going to look like. So you're just going to drag your image from your computer and it's going to automatically remove that background. Sometimes it takes away too much. So here we can see that the eyes are also um, have also been been removed. So we're going to restore just the eyeballs here so that they're going to stay white. And then you can download this image right to your computer. This is completely free, which is fantastic. All of the websites that I have showed you today are completely free and open for use. The last part is to actually put together your website. So you can edit your site name, give it, so usually I do it something descriptive for the course I'm teaching. You can change the background here. You can add a text box. So this is where I would typically put my prompt. And then underneath, you can actually insert your Google Drawing. So in here, I like to go with my drive and I'll go over to recent and it'll show me all of my recent, recent activities. So we can do add-ins to 10 and then go ahead and insert that particular image. And we're just gonna drag that over and then automatically that image that I put together and layered all of these things on top of each other are gonna show up. It's always good for the students to have a way to input their answers from the escape rooms. So I typically use Google Forms. All of the products that I was using were Google products, so Google Sites, Google Drawings, and Google Forms, mainly because they interact really nicely together. Google is free. You will need a Google account in order to do this. Here's an escape room that I designed for my final for one of my courses. I have them put in their name, which is optional. And then here are all of the locks. So the clues are going to be embedded right into the, each of the activities and they'll input their, their clue right there. And then I have some sort of congratulatory um, announcement right at the, at the very end to say, hey, you did it, congratulations. And this will pop up in the escape room when they're done. So some of the tips and tricks that I would recommend is make sure that you have a folder for all your files for each escape room. You're going to be pulling a lot of different files for each of your images that you're using and layering on, so it's helpful to keep everything in one spot. I also keep a running Word document with all of my links and the clues, so which clue goes to which hyperlink or which activity. And also, always double check all of your links and your final website before releasing to students. You need to make sure that every Google activity, you change the access to everyone with the link can view. That way everyone's going to be able to see it. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you learned something new and I can't wait to discuss all of this with you guys in our joint session.